I am Pua Ken Ogolmeyer, and I'm a Hawaiian language professor here at Manoa. I was born in San Francisco, raised in Minnesota, and came here when I was 18. And uh, setting up the Institute of Hawaiian Language Research and Translation, and it's to provide a portal, really, for anyone or any different field to access the Hawaiian language materials. My focus oftentimes is the Hawaiian language newspapers, but it really, they're sort of a backbone of the larger piece. They provide sort of a gateway, but they alone are a million pages worth of material. That leads into another perhaps million pages of manuscript and government doc and that kind of thing that the newspapers help sort of give a, a framework to make them understandable. Hawaiian newspapers started in 1834. They go to 1948. While our focus is often the newspapers, this really, it, it, like I say, it's the framework, it's the outline sort of that links up all the government documents, all the manuscript material, things that didn't make it into public you know, domain. So uh, it's just in the last 20 years or so that that huge repository of Hawaiian language material has become accessible and used and sort of started to integrate again into our modern scholarship. But it's hard to access if you don't speak Hawaiian <laughs> and if you don't know where to look. So we're both institutionalizing and professionalizing the access to Hawaiian knowledge. So the last 10, maybe 12 years, we've been working with Sea Grant here that sort of stimulated JIMAR, the Joint Institute of Marine and Atmospheric Research, to look into, there are reports of um, weather. Almost every newspaper will give from around the islands. So actually now we can look back a hundred extra years at the weather cycles that are sort of illuminated by that. And so we pulled weather, we pulled 4,000 articles from the newspapers. Then we were told, well, our, one of our interests is hurricanes, and especially this one hurricane. The island of Hawaii was assumed to be impervious, right? It's protected by the shape of the mountain. That's modern logic, by the way. So they said, but there's this storm that's mentioned in a couple of like the, the seminary report and whatnot, one of the English papers, but not much detail on it, it's 1871. Are there any articles on that? So I look in our database, we have 16 about that one storm. There's people from Kona are reporting, people from Amaku or from Maui. Well, we translated them out and the scientists are able to extrapolate from our descriptions that you know we find in the newspaper. And they were able to not only say it's a level three hurricane that hit Hawaii Island, they can map the whole trajectory of it. So it came up through Waipio, hit Kohala really bad, Hamakua and Kona are affected. And then it moves north, goes across Maui, Molokai and out to sea. So to be able to document that process, actually at the time we were doing that, legislation was proposed for Hawaii Island to drop hurricane insurance and to lower the hurricane building standards because, you know, modern logic said they're immune. They have to pay volcano insurance. Nobody else does. So it seemed like an unnecessary imposition. Well, anyway, this information helped sunder that legislation so that when ESEL slapped, all the uh, insurance and the building codes were still in place. Probably saved a few million dollars off the backs of the taxpayers. So it's not like it's irrelevant today. It's, it's really, you know, we need the data. We're able to extend some of what we know because this extends our historical window. So I was actually going to retire, but we saw the hope of doing something similar to that, this capacity building at the university. And President Lasner saw the value of it immediately and he said, I'll give you an incubation year. So immediately, this got support from most of the departments on campus that we've worked with already, and it initiated new support. You know, that's part of the reason to institutionalize this. I mean, we could just entertain ourselves for a few generations pulling these pearls out. But there's actually a lot of information that's really usable in all different fields of study today. Um, we have really been adamant in all of our efforts that everything that we generate is public is widespread, easy access, 
um, because it was out of reach for so long, the only hope of having it sort of re-articulated is to make it widely accessible. It's really, it's an exciting little glimpse into a place that otherwise we have no, even no imagination about. Yeah. And much of the history that all of us learned, even if you went to school right here, was done without this information. You know, it's, it's not that it's incorrect, it's that it's incomplete. It sort of turns black and white photos into color, in a way, or makes two-dimensional things three-dimensional. It just adds a whole layer to almost anything. Give me a topic, I can entertain you for a long time.